Welcome to the GP podcast today with Stefan aka Bazooka Bird and myself Mick aka Vanlik. Today it is a very interesting topic. The topic is what changes in gaming when you have a child. And we have the ultimate expert for that because two years ago this happened to Bazooka Bird aka Stefan. Hi Stefan. <laughs> Hi Michael, how are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, guys, becoming a new father is really exciting, but also challenging, and especially for gaming also as well. And we are talking today about this topic and what you have to be aware when you're getting a kid, um, that a few things will change if you are trying to do as good as possible also as you as a partner and a daddy as well, not only in the gaming. Okay, <laughs> that I think that that affects probably uh, a good amount of uh, of gamers at some point, definitely. Um, and this will affect gaming probably in a in a big way. We see already a lot of uh, a lot of streamers, for example, uh, who have kids or who got kids recently. So yes, yeah. Do you do you want to do you want to start with the first topic? What would be interesting for for all the gamers? All right, you want to start your first question, or should I start? Ah, uh, you could start. All right. So, Michael, what do you think? Because you're not a daddy so far. What is the biggest change if you're getting a new baby into your life and you're a gamer? What will change in your gaming habits? Yeah, I can, for myself, I can only guess. But I, I would guess yeah. that the biggest thing uh, which changes will be time and how you manage time because it's very time demanding uh, having a, a, a child, especially when it's uh when it's a baby or yeah and then <laughs> probably even more if it's if it's getting older um but i guess that that's probably the most most uh difficult thing in the first the first time you get a baby um to manage this and also balance it out with gaming or yeah, i don't know maybe you do you have to cut gaming completely but uh For those kind of questions, we have to export here. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I would say you are correct. Time management is one of the biggest. And also game, select, game selection, I would say. Mm. But, yeah, let me tell you why it's time management. You have to think like... Um, and that's also... Game selection, time management are... E like equal actually because it depends on like it needs uh, both the same way like for example if you play League of Legend a game goes, ar goes around like 30 minutes I would say maybe one hour mm -hmm. and then your kid is screaming and your wife needs your attention your help or whatever and you're in a League of Legend game Now the question, can you just pause like pause the game or can you leave the game? Will be there any problems with your account maybe? Or the experience for the other players? Mm -hmm. And there it, it, there it is starting. Um, so if you play, the best time to play is when the kids are sleeping um, because then you have the best opportunity to just play the game. Other than that, you always have like a kid who wants your attention or your wife needs help. And yeah, so for myself, I would say the best time to play is when they are sleeping. So for myself, I play in the morning or in the evening. Depends if I need to go to bed as well <laughs> with my kid, which is at the moment the thing which I have to do. But for, mo for most of the gamers... Um, I, th I would say most of the gamers have a nine-to-five job. That means they're 
um, going to work in the morning and coming in the evening. And the normal schedule for them at the moment before a kid is going to work, coming home from work, spending maybe time with the partner a little bit and then game. That's probably the normal schedule. So what would yes. probably change for them and what is the challenge for them then? I think the challenge for them especially is to connect with the baby. So like have a better bonding with the baby because they are like eight hours away. Um, and the next thing is like figuring out um, when is the best time to play because they need also to sleep uh, because they have to work again next um, the next morning. So I don't know actually, it's hard to tell. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, that is probably the time for sacri sacrifices. But also, yeah. I mean, the 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 normal schedule is like go, going to the work in the, the morning and coming back in the after, in the evening and then probably spending time with, with uh, wife and child. And that is the, the only time. And probably the gaming will be sacrificed on weekdays and will be postponed to weekends probably when they have a little bit more time and can maybe squeeze in one or two hours uh, in the evening or when, when it's sleeping, something like that. So it will it, it will change probably drastically if you have a nine to five job, I think. Yeah, there will be a shift in priorities, yeah. Maybe gaming, like maybe in the first months, gaming will be not your first priority because like in the first month, you will have really less sleep um, and then maybe you think about more getting sleep than going and doing some raids or something like that. But yeah, no. but the shift in priorities will come as well for sure. Yeah. But as, as you said as well, um, it's probably a time, uh, it's probably also a situation in your life where your, the games you play are changing. You mentioned yes going raiding going raiding with your raid group is probably not anymore possible because there yeah, sometimes you have to go in the middle of the of the of the raid or something like that so that is probably a, a very big thing and you that can be the case that a lot of pc gamers or console gamers will then swap more into mobile what do you think in this topic did it affect you as well yeah, me, yeah, affect me as well. Like, for example, my cousin was asking me uh, if I want to join them in the raid group. And I would like to join them. But the problem is they're starting at, um, I think, 9 p.m. or 8 p.m. And then for three hours. And the problem is if your kid is going to bed between 8 to 10 p.m., uh, depending on the, how the day was going, then you have a problem because, well, there's a problem that maybe my kid is awake, so I cannot be there. Maybe it is sleeping, then I could be there, but it's not 100% sure. And if you're then, like, for example, a tank, which is a main role, like, in raiding, then um, there will have a problem. So you're more likely to say, sorry, guys, I can't join because the time is not perfect and to find like the perfect rate time for like your lifestyle and also your um, baby situation is quite hard and like you said the best way is actually to swift uh, swift to uh, mobile games and that's one of the thing I did actually e like especially in the beginning of the baby uh, time like the first months I was only playing mobile games because it was so easy. You had like, I don't know, like 30 minutes, one hour, like time for just chilling. You go on the, uh, sitting on the couch and get uh, grabbing your mobile phone and play 
I, I think to this time I was playing Clash of Clans if I remember right. So yeah, I'm having just some fun in Clash of Clans. Um, yeah, mm. but yeah, it will shift to more into the direction mobile games because it's more easy. Games are going not that long and all this kind of stuff. Mm. Has uh, has the whole parenting uh, changed your view on how important gaming for you is, or how how you how you view gaming? Has that changed anything? I would say yes, because what I was seeing, especially like last months, like the last two months, I was again like before I didn't play that much because I was more into developing games and getting our application ready and all this kind of stuff. So I was more into business and then the new expansion of World of Warcraft was coming out and then uh, Michael and I went 100% into it and I always played at the night when uh, my wife and the baby was sleeping. So it was for me the point where it was time for me time for relaxing like Elon Musk also said gaming is a kind of way of like uh, meditation and if I play I'm really into into the game I forget everything around me so that's nice because you can get also some energy back uh, into your body because taking a break of your normal life I would say yeah mm. So you're mainly using gaming then to to relax in your me time and to shut down from everything else. Yeah. Yeah, I would say that, yeah. And I it think changed from yeah. from doing it only for joy before or No, what you you change? feel like for example, I have like this um uh, the whoop um, what's this armband of in English um, wristband yeah my wristband and it is measuring my sleep it is measuring my stress level and all this kind of stuff and mm. what I see what I did see actually is if I play before sleeping um, like most of the people say you should not do that before sleeping because your brain cannot shut down and all this kind of stuff. And so your sleep yeah. will be um, not good enough. What I did see is actually I sleep better and my rest was better. Okay. So <laughs> it is like a rela like for me a, a relax relax what oh, die like relaxing. Yeah, I want to say that, but mm -hmm. I can't. So uh, it is relaxing, a kind of way of meditation for myself. And like, especially like our lifestyle is special. I am wake up in the morning um, doing my work, have time with my uh, wife and my kid during lunch. Um, again, work a little bit. Then the kid is uh, doing a nap. After the nap, we will go outside together have family time together until kid is going to bed and then again I work or have time for myself and then I take most of the time time for myself watch YouTube videos or play video games and that's the best thing which I see also in my wrist and the data I get that my rest is then better yeah mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, also what what has, what, uh, what, do, what 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 are you doing uh, like what is gaming for you? Is it like also meditation or is it getting more creativity? What what is what is gaming for you? No, I would say gaming for me is mm, more joy and um quality time i would say it's it's more uh yeah and enjoying doing doing something in a, another world so i don't know hard to say but mostly mostly joy i would say because you're going into 
we are we're mostly playing World of Warcraft, so you're going into this fantasy world and can do your creative uh, stuff and stuff like that. So it's mostly joy for me because when I want to calm down, I meditate or I read books. That's that's how I how I reset my brain. Um, so gaming is only joy, and I only can game if I feel very good. When I'm in a down or something like that, I don't play. I do other stuff like to to bring me out of the mood. So I think it's it's mostly mostly only only joy. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you want to go on with the question or? Um, yeah. Should I shoot? What kind of games do you think are family friendly? And maybe you can also say, for example, not like sp like specific games, maybe game genre. Mm -hmm. mm, maybe yeah, maybe I can I can put that almost together with a question of mine. Um, family friendly, you can look at these SFK at these age restrictions on the video games, right? If they say it's for kids from the age of zero, then it's family friendly probably. So will the age restriction of games be important for you, for your child in the future? Or do you, or do you say you don't give a damn about age restriction? I think I would ignore the restriction and mm -hmm. think on my own if this is a good game for my kid or not. Okay. So, because like, for example, like horror games, my, my, I think one of the first games I played um, with my sisters together was a horror game, Resident Evil, on PlayStation 1. And it was so crazy. So, <laughs> like, these kind of games, I would not give my 8-year um, kid to play, for example. Mm. But... I experienced it, it in my own, but I would not do it like, for example, for my kid. Yeah. Mm. Because the damage and fear can grow about stuff which you never was thinking about. So I would not do that. Yeah, Yeah, but Resident Evil says uh, it's from 18 above, right? So the age restriction yep. would be pretty accurate there true yeah but like for for myself i don't watch any horror movies anymore because it's garbage for your mind <laughs> mm. it is um. in my opinion so that's why like even like it said 18 plus doesn't mean it's good for you if you're yeah, ni like 19 yeah so and same with like for example let's say there are like games for your free old kid and they're starting to put woke stuff into it. Is it family mm -hmm. friendly? Ah, Probably not. There. Mm. Yeah, that's that's true. Um, there can be also games uh, which are from the age of zero, right? That that every or from the age of three that everyone can play. But there is, for example, the political woke stuff in it that they show your child sexual things. But these things are not declared sexually because it's for, I don't know, what they declare it, teaching or something like that. That's a good argument. Yeah, yeah that's uh, something parents have to look out for, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I would, before, play the game for myself to see if it's good and then say, let's go. Maybe there will be a time where you test together so you will mm. figure it out through playing with your kid. But then you can also explain it um, because if your kid is playing and you don't see what is going on in the game and your kid cannot decide is this good for me or is it bad for me, 
Is it true? Is it false? And yeah. No. So coming back to my question, what kind of games are f family friendly or game genre? What would you say? Um, I would have said, for example, when you look at games like Fall Guys, is it called Fall Guys? I think so, right? Yeah. Um, games like that are are family friendly, where you don't have to. What what is it called? What are those games called? Hack and slash? No, not hack and slash, but or things like, for example, when I when I look at my childhood, for example, the first games I played was Snake, Tetris, <laughs> Pokemon, Mario. These were the first games I played on yes. uh, my nintendo something i don't know the hand console nintendo color was the first one probably yeah, and yeah stuff like that so yeah these are family friendly um video games in my opinion because yeah it's so so it's very much fiction and uh, fantasy so nothing with with guns or political or something like that so i think these these are good games to start with um, what what do yeah. you think? Yeah, I, I think like every game where you can easy pause or save the game is like best family friendly because if there is anything, any need of your baby or your wife, you can just pause the game, you can save the game, you can play later on um, further where you stopped. So I think all these kind of games are family friendly and also like oh, games okay. where it is like shorter levels and like for example if you like we all ha already had this um example with League of Legend Brawl Star League of Legend goes from 30 minutes to 1 hour Brawl Star goes from 2 minutes to maybe max 5 minutes and so it's more easier and also it is not that horrible if you leave the uh, the party yeah, then we were talking about two different things. You were talking about what is friendly for yourself um, uh, to family friendly in case of time. And I was thinking about family friendly for your child or for the family. Ah, okay. Yeah, we, yeah, I, I mean <laughs> that that direction. Yeah, okay. Okay, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, but now you, you as a viewer have uh, both opinions. Once for the child and once for the, for the gamers or for the daddy itself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, do you feel a responsibility to set an example f uh, of how much time you spend on games or in front of a screen in, uh, when you think about your child? So, would you no, do yeah. you think about that 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 you're an example? <laughs> and yeah. All right. So, <laughs> I I would say I'm not the good example. Because I'm most of the time in front of a laptop. So I would say mm -hmm. I spend at least 50% of the day in front of the laptop. Mm -hmm. um, that's not good. And my kid is seeing that sometimes. And also my kid is like one year and eight months. And she's always like... Um, figure out what working means and what daddy is doing so she knows what i'm doing and that i'm spending a lot of time and we had like a beginning i think when she went one year or something like that we had like two weeks a problem with the ipad that she wants to watch like movies like but like the, like a kid like Mu we played music and she wants to watch like um, Elsa and Anna, the frozen mm. queen or something like that. Um, mm. She wants to watch that and then she wants to watch it on a regular base. If we want to say like after 10 minutes, now it's over, then she went crazy. So I already saw she's addicted to that. And also like, for example, uh, with our mobile phones, we also saw that 
she wants to grab their mobile phone she wants to hold it she wants to see uh, typing stuff on it and all this kind of stuff so you see the addiction already in a kind of way and we are at least like in the end we are the problem because we are always on the mobile phone we are always sitting in front of our laptop or pc to work or do meetings or something like that and kids around us see that and they're like trying to do the same stuff like you do and want to learn from you and so that's why it is important that you be aware of that and for that i'm not the best role model to be honest but what's what's the option i mean not working <laughs> <laughs> yeah like i have two options i stop working or i go out and work somewhere else where my kid don't see that i'm always on the laptop or a mobile phone or something like that yeah yeah but but Both. it's it's the reality yeah. um, i mean it's the reality you work yeah. a job if you work a job in in a company you and you're in marketing for example or in probably these t these days 50 percent of the jobs you're in front of a yeah. pc and that for at least eight to nine hours when you you do the job so <laughs> it's not avoidable they will do it they will do it in their life at some point yeah true yeah the only thing which i try is that before bed i try that she don't get any screen time so the opposite yeah. what i do <laughs> that's <laughs> the only thing uh i try with her um but maybe i have to say like your jeans. La yeah possible maybe let's see but for now <laughs> she, she cannot uh, show the genes. Um, let's see. Mm. But yeah, but yeah, like our kid is like, and I, what I also maybe that's a tip from myself. We try to do at less screen time as possible. But if the kid wants something just give it to them that they can experience that and after time it's getting boring because for now like we had like few weeks where the ipad situation was crazy but like for months now she don't thinks about it anymore and don't want to do like watching music or something like that now it's more like we need some time to clean or do something here um watch your um, favorite song or something like that um but it's not like the kid was is asking us hey i want to watch ipad or something like that so yeah my parents thought as, as yeah. that probably as well when i played world of warcraft the first time oh let him do it it will get boring and <laughs> here i am 20 years later still playing world of warcraft <laughs> <laughs> No, nah, yeah, I'm not maybe. sure about that. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, but like I, I can see it for now like that a lot of stuff mm. which like they're like few t for few times it is really like you think oh she's always eating pizza, always eating pizza and then she don't want to see any pizza. Like first time she was like crazy about uh, noodles, right? So mm she didn't eat uh, she only eat noodle 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 always and <laughs> now if you want to give her noodles she don't want to have it anymore now she's eating mm -hmm. beans on stuff like that or pizza is still crazy about pizza but um <laughs> it's always changing it's just like oh it's new it's interesting and then mm -hmm. after time you see it with kids if they're getting new toys or something like that it's interesting for for a few times or for a couple of times and then it's okay i want to have a new one because now it's boring i want something new mm -hmm. and that's why most parents ending with like a full room of toys yeah that's crazy yeah, yeah. Okay. but yeah well like in your opinion what do you think like would you say if you have a kid you will think about this topic about what uh about the screen time 
yeah, like um, being a role model or something like that in mm. this specific topic. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think I think I would think about it and I think I would be aware about it, but not in case of the laptop or something like that, because to be honest, this is our reality now. But yeah. we see it um, most of the time and what we can actually do is with our smartphones because our smartphones are actually not necessary. We only need them maybe for navigation uh, mm -hmm. or for messaging. But other than that, we don't need it actually. So I don't want to to give this this addiction um, yeah down to down to kids and i think yeah. that's the that's the yeah that's the biggest thing we can adapt in front of our kids um yeah to not do and then they will probably see it um but also yeah, yeah implementing rules i would i would implement rules like like uh like my parents did um for example no no phones or nothing on the on the table when eating or something like that so that they that they develop those manners you know that the phone is something you only use yeah. when you're on your own um not when you're speaking with people or not putting your your phone uh on the table when speaking with someone or some, something like that so i think i think that's those kind of things are are important for me especially yeah that's a good point i agree Yeah, um, will in case of video games, will you give your child access to games? And if yes, when and how much? <laughs> That's a hard <laughs> question because I have a wife. <laughs> yeah, I mean this this is a question. This is a question. Um, every gamer will will confront himself with this question at some point. Like, in my opinion, I would be more open to it to do it earlier, I think. And I think me and my wife, we have a healthy relationship for that because she is the one extreme and I'm the other extreme. So we meet us somewhere in the middle, I think, in the end. Um, because she wants actually to try as long as possible to try that the kid is not going into the digital world and i'm more into like it's the future it is necessary so i try to be to help her that she learns some kind of stuff and it's also it's like for for example when you play super mario or something like that that's awesome time when i look uh, backwards right Mm. so i would i i would give access i don't know when i would give access i think it depending it depends on the game but for example super mario i could see myself giving access <laughs> with six at least mm. Mm. But I'm not sure. Let's see. No. At I the mean, moment, just I have a all, all, almost two-year-old kid, so at the moment I have other problems. And if the time is coming where she say, "Hey, daddy, I want also to play with you video games or something like that," because she's seeing, "Daddy, what are you doing?" and I tell her, "Yeah, I play video games." I would also like to play video games, and then I would think about to maybe buy a Nintendo buy small games for kids and then going in because like for example we also talk, talked about that stuff in um another topic in pot in other podcast gaming is also nice to learn new stuff right so it yeah, can mm -hmm. also be a way to learn and i think like for learning i could also imagine to do it even earlier than six mm. Because yeah. it's easier. You learn, you learn. Um, for example, I don't know if you n want to learn math or 
um, the ABC. If you do it in a playful way, your kid will be more likely to learn stuff, right? Mm. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, the, the thing is, we only know, we only experience it for ourselves, and this is the only experience we have. Everything else is theory, right? When we yeah. learn about stuff and when we hear something and someone says, this is good for your child, this is good for your child, blah, 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 blah. This is all theory. But what we know is what we experienced for ourselves. This is what we know. And this is yeah. what we know what it does with with someone, right? Yeah. And I, for myself, um, my parents were very chill with, with that kind of stuff when I had the desire. I mean... I told that in a podcast before my parents had a video shop and there were I had access to every game possible <laughs> probably <laughs> and um that with the age of before I was in kindergarten so probably with 5 <laughs> 5 or 6 um and yeah but before I started uh, also with a game of color or something like that so I think when I when I think for myself um when I had the desire uh, to to play those those, those kind of games, um, I had the opportunity to play those games. But when I think back, I was more outside and did stuff up outside and uh, had fun there or played with uh, stuff like Lego or something like that. So it's probably a little bit like you said, but maybe because the game were games were different. That's um, debatable. Because we only had access to Pokemon, we only had access to Animal Crossing at at some point then, or yeah. very basic games, I would say, and not online games or something like that, not Call of Duty, Fortnite or something like that, which are probably more addicting. So maybe the games were different, but for us, for us, it was like, yeah, you play this game a little bit, and then you play Lego, and then you play this with your uh, sister or brother, and then you play this. So it's it was. It was only a little a small mix, like, yeah, you you were not fancy to to play all the time those those kind of games, right? Yeah. So yeah, I I've, I I think it started with multiplayer online and yeah. how all this kind of achievement stuff, because before it was only you played the game. It has most of the time an end, and then you have a new game or you do something differently. And I think, yeah, the gaming industry changed and that is maybe the most problem thinking about that actually because all the other games in our time I think was different and that's why we have maybe a different childhood and a better one maybe as well. Yeah, but it's uh, you can you can regulate it, right? Because uh, yeah, correct, you, can, yeah. you can give your child... The, the not online games and offline games yeah so you can you can guide them through a similar similar childhood um, and you know what what is the um, you know what's the result of it so uh, you have everything in your hands yeah. yes yeah you, you, have, you have a question, a question. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have another question no, the age okay. restriction we already had. Yeah. All right. Um, I have one, and this is about communities. So do you think there are a lot of communities in the different games where support family-friendly or fatherhood, where you can join a guild with other parents, for example, where it's, everything is a little bit chilled and more likely that you still ha can have the benefits of for example World of Warcraft with a guild and raiding together but it's family friendly and stuff like that mm, I mean it depends on the game when you look at World of Warcraft sure there are guilds but as you said in the beginning it's a little bit difficult because you cannot tell you it can be that that you have time at this time where you uh, schedule something or something is uh, in between and your child needs your help or something like that. So 
it's it's difficult in those kind of games but when i think for example um at these at fathers which are playing call of duty or something like that or which are playing strategy games or something like that i mean these are way easier to to handle in those kind of uh, situations because some of them are offline games some of them who doesn't care if you if uh, who does care if you uh, leave a, a battle in uh, call of duty uh, when you do the um the whole ro uh, battle royale stuff or something like that nobody cares if you leave that that battle so yeah it it all depends on the games and i think world of warcraft for example when you want to play it competitively with raiding is one of the special games which are difficult to play or something like league of legends as well probably one of uh, those games are yeah, the most difficult to play when you're when you're restricted in your time yes yeah i think the most benefit if you join a guild or a community where also other parents are or maybe also with grown kids is that they have the understanding what you're going through and so they mm -hmm. understand hey he has to leave but it's okay um we can understand that because we know exactly what's uh, going on because like before i when i was not a dad i was i i didn't have that understanding like i think like why are you playing world of Warcraft when you have a kid behind that needs your attention right but sometimes you mm -hmm. cannot like plan it and yeah so now i have a better understanding of that mm -hmm. That makes sense, yeah. All right, Michael. Um, I have one final question. Imagine you have a kid and you can play your favorite game with your kid together. How does it feel like? Depends how good the kid is. <laughs> 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 if it's too bad it gets kicked out <laughs> out of the group <laughs> we invite some uh, random dude come on <laughs> okay. I didn't imagine that answer but okay got it <laughs> <laughs> no this was obviously obviously this was a joke um, yeah I don't know you tell me then uh, when it's when it's time um, I think that's uh, something special then um, what do you think it's only hypoth hypothetical you know yeah if if i think for example i playing my dk and my kid is healing me <laughs> <laughs> would would be actually mm. funny and i would enjoy this time no. so mm. yeah i'm looking forward to play video games with my kids and because I think it's a passion you can share with your kids. And if your kids is also liking this um, hobby, I think it's nice to share it with your kids. So I'm really looking I forward to play video games with my kids. Let's see when the time is coming. And yeah. I think the first game you have to learn is then Minecraft. <laughs> no way. <laughs> <laughs> Probably yes. I have one last question. Um, what would be the number one tip you would give a gamer who is becoming a father? The number one tip, only the best tip. What, which would about gaming or general? About a tip, not, um, in combination with gaming, for sure. Yeah, the kid and gaming. How to I don't know manage these kind of things or stuff like that. Think about time management, think about game selection and pick the games or which most likely you don't have to think about a lot. Like, for example, don't pick Leech of Legend if you're a new dad and think about playing Leech of Legend. Um, go for mobile games in the first month. Um, go then with maybe some games where you can maybe co go for console games. They're most likely you can pause and save, and so there will be no problem. But yeah, time management. So think about when you yeah. really want to play, 
because if you start playing and then have to cancel it, it you're getting a little bit frustrated. So think about when you want to play video games, mostly the best time when they are sleeping, and think about what kind of games you want to play so that when you play and there will be sometimes problem which you cannot plan, that you don't have problem that you have to leave the game or can at least pause the game. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Now you heard heard um, some encouraging tips uh, for you when you're becoming a father as a gamer. Uh, thank you for listening. Um, give this video a like. And the last words are yours, Stefan. All right. Thank you for your time, guys. Make some kids. Have fun. And <laughs> see you in the next <laughs> podcast, guys. Bye-bye. See you.